Before we can think about what's going on in an element of fluid or a larger fluid uh, extent, we need to understand what we mean when we talk about a continuum fluid and the variables that describe how it's moving and what its state is. So for a solid, some chunk of stuff over here, a single velocity vector and a single rotation vector are enough to describe its motion because all of the parts move in harmony in a rigid body. On the other hand, in a fluid, we could have the same sort of chunk of fluid and this part might be moving at that velocity, this part might be moving at that velocity, and this part might be moving at that velocity. So we need, and the shape of this chunk of fluid will be changing with time. So we need to be able to describe each of these different velocities separately for each of these different particles, each of these different locations in the continuum. So depending on where the element of fluid is located on our x, y, z Cartesian axes, then we'll see that we get a velocity vector that is actually a function of all of those spatial dimensions, x, y, z, and also time, because things could be changing with time. So the velocity is much more complicated to describe than the simple velocity characteristics of a rigid body. Likewise, at all these different locations, we could have a different pressure within the fluid that will be exerting a pressure force to drive it in one direction or another. So we'll also have a pressure field P, which is also a function of location, x, y, z, and time. These are our primary variables in fluid mechanics. We're interested in the velocity that the fluid's traveling at, at different locations in the fluid, and what the local value of the pressure is. Now we'll also notice that when we deform a fluid, it resists deformation. And we'll have a shear stress field, a viscous stress field, represented by this stress tau. And that tau is also a function of x, y, z, and time. And we'll see later on that actually it's the velocity field, that is how we're deforming the flow, how different these velocities are each from one another, that determines how big that shear stress is. Other important properties in fluids? Temperature. Almost always we're interested in something to do with heat transfer, and that temperature will also be a function of x, y, z, and time. And density, also related to temperature, will be a function of x, y, z, and time. Very often we will say that this is isothermal and incompressible and we will treat those as being constants, certainly for this course and often throughout fluid mechanics. Now in this continuum we can either work with a two-dimensional set of axes, just x and y, or three-dimensional set of axes, x, y, and z. In two dimensions, our velocity, u, also sometimes written as capital V in bold to indicate that it's a vector, will be equal to the components, u in the x direction, times the i vector, which is the one that goes in the x direction, plus v, the component going in the y direction, times j, the unit vector pointing in the y direction. Likewise, if we go to 3D, we'll have exactly the same thing, except in addition to the x and y dimensions, we'll pick up a w, a z dimension, a z component in the k direction, this unit vector out along the z-axis. So if we can break down this velocity into its requisite components, then we should be able to do a force balance in each direction and then calculate accelerations on the fluid in each of the component directions individually.